Welcome to the Clarified Realty Podcast, exposing the real estate secrets your agent doesn't want you to know. Here's your host, Tom Clary. Welcome to the Clarified Realty Podcast. I'm Tom Clary and I'm your host. I'm a real estate agent here in the beautiful state of California, Los Angeles to be exact. I'm here with my co-host, Ron Bruno. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing well. Yeah? I'm doing well, yeah. Anything new or different happening in the Bruno sphere? Uh, let's see. We, uh, we had oysters. We yeah, had oysters for Valentine's Day. You were telling me about Day. oysters. By the way, <laughs> you had them shipped to you? Is yes. that right? Yes. You had them shipped to you? We oysters? Had them shi- yes. Yes. Now, okay, look. That makes you, by percent, as percentage, braver than me. <laughs> I, there's no way that I would like trust oysters that I just got in the mail. No, no, no. So they, so obviously they, they came prepared where they had, they were on ice. Yeah. And we had ice cream shipped to us, Tom. I, oh, well, that's true. <laughs> and it didn't okay, melt. There are ways but, to ship things. But I, but ice cream, if it melts or slightly melts and gets refrozen or whatever like that, doesn't kill you. Like oysters can like do some real damage okay, to your body. Okay, Tom. How do you think oysters get to a restaurant or how do they get to the grocery store? Well, they, look, they are don't ship, but they're sh- they don't pick themselves up, grow legs, <laughs> and walk into that place on ice. They don't. They're I, shipped. That is a given. Yes. Right? But but seriously, I'm not gonna like you know. We've had I think a story. Watch on Goodfellas. Here. Watch Goodfellas. You uh, see all those lobsters? They're all on ice. They're all on ice, and it's shipped. But but here's the thing though, is that like we had an article, uh, 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 one of your news ca- uh, articles before, yeah, that, about literally a delivery person doing their business in a driveway in front of somebody's house. Do you remember that? Like the uh, the Amazon? Like, I don't trust the the folks that are doing those deliveries to deliver my oh, food to me. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, right, right, right. right you right. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Remember that story where we were talking uh, about now that... This was little, FedEx. Yeah. I, rem- I remember seeing the FedEx guy. Yeah, you know. Gidget likes him. Drop trowel. Yeah. And, and I'm saying that that's the same person who's bringing this <laughs> food to you. I'm sorry, I'm not... It's all about logistics and supply chain, man. <laughs> There's a lot of crazy stuff out there. I, I we enjoyed our oysters uh, I, for my Valentine's bet. Day. I hope you did. I hope you didn't. There enjoy- was no dropping trowel. And by the way, <laughs> oysters they come live, and they're sealed. Well, that, but that's that's different. They're I know. sealed. Well, they're you sealed. have to shuck them. I, I understand how oysters work, Ron. I okay. may have eaten one or two before in the past, right? right? right. But I am saying that when something arrives live, like yes. you can't, if you pick up a lobster, it, you know, waves its, you know, claws at you and mm-hmm. all that's, it, you can tell that's a live lobster. Okay. It's a little bit different with an oyster. Oh no, you can, you can definitely tell if it's live. How can you tell if it's live? I have no idea. <laughs> I just it's know. It's closed. Well, you, you have know? to be careful. You can't wash them. What? what? Okay. Yes. Fresh water can't touch the oyster. It'll kill it. Oh, really? Yeah, so apparently you're like eating it live, which is kind of freaky. Wow, I'm getting kind of... Yeah, but it's not like, you know, it's like it's not like an insect that's like moving around. No. And, you know, or chirping or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, I have to say that I have one time eaten something. I went to a sushi restaurant, mm-hmm. right, where they did the live prawn. Oh, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it was the dude in front of me, yes. right, with the live squiggling prawn mm-hmm. yeah. in his hand, yep. right? And the thing was still on my plate, like kind of doing yeah. this. Uh-huh. Like, I'm, I'm yes. making a motion with my hand that it's twitching. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I, I, I felt for the thing. I oh, felt, yeah. you know, but I had to put it out of its misery. That's like, of I think it's called right. like fresh shrimp or something like that. Right. Right. Where, where you, you, they basically, they take the live thing, throw it in the, you know, into the batter and the head and you like, you actually eat the head. Oh, you love the head. Yeah, it's good. It's a good thing. It's good. Anyway, sweet shrimp, sweet shrimp. Is that what it's called? Maybe it's maybe it's maybe there's a. Maybe, do you think that like I had to, they charge me more for that feeling of killing something? Ah, maybe. Like maybe it's like part of the the draw of the whole thing. Possibly. It's like it's not like done in the back room where some you know you don't see it. You get to actually watch the violence. Yes. Like that's that's why they charge me an extra five bucks for it. Ah. Uh, I don't it. know. Yeah. 
It's kind of demented. A little bit. All right. A little bit. You got a news article for today? Uh, <laughs> no. The yes, next, I do. Yes, I do. Article? Yeah, yeah. You actually came up with this one. That I, was mine. I found it. I, I thought this was pretty great. So it says, Mesa real estate agent heads to prison for short sale that netted his parents a profit. Wah, wah, yeah. wah. O- only a story a mother can love. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently what this guy did, so he's a realtor, and what he did was he had a listing. And this particular listing was heading to foreclosure. And, you know, the property, he, you know, in a foreclosure, you have to uh, accept the offers and then the right. bank has to approve them. Right. Right. So he went ahead. And it makes sense, by the way, because they, they need to make their money back and they want to make sure that, okay, well, if we're going to have to do it for less than what we gave them. Correct. We should, you know, we have to agree to what it is. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, he presented some offers and one of those offers happened to be his parents' LLC. Oh, you don't say, Ron. Uh, it's true. So he, I'm sensing a conflict of interest uh, here. Tiny, tiny bit, tiny yeah. bit. So he went ahead, yeah, and you know, sold, you know, said, okay, here's the offer. And they said, are there any other offers? Nope. No other offers. No. But there happened to be other offers ex- as high as $870,000. Shocker. But he went ahead, showed it to the banks, and the banks said, okay, 580. That's, that's what it should be. Yeah. So went ahead and sale went through. And then Within days of the purchase, said he then turned it around and listed it for one point one million dollars. Oh, is that all? That's it. That's just one point one. So just a tiny profit, a little bit. And you know, I mean, you know, why, why, why wait? Yeah, <laughs> you know, right. why not strike while the iron's hot? <laughs> right. If you're gonna defraud, just go all the way through. You know, it. don't even don't, don't even pull any punches. Just, exactly. Just don't don't half ass it. Full just on. Go full on. So right. he then yeah. So he he sold it for two months later for one point zero five million in cash. Wow. Yeah. So Jeez. this was back in 2012, and uh, yeah, his license became inactive on February 9th, and, yeah, and that's when the uh, uh, yeah, that's when the feds got involved and the attorney well, general and, and you know, another piece of this, he said that, um, you know, so the buyer, the cash buyer, the reason why they were asking, uh, you know, he's like, you know, how could it be 1.1? You sold it for 560 because, you know, 580 because all of that is public record. Right. Right. So past sales. And he said that there, there was a lien that was paid outside of escrow. Oh, so he lied on three accounts. Wow. Right. Not to mention basically being a straw buyer, you know, with his parents. Right. LLC. Right. You know, what's fascinating about this story also, though, is like when you think about how this happens, right, Mm -hmm. that that the the, when the banks are trying to offload these properties and they're trying to get, you know, take care of them, look, they don't want them on their books and I get it. Correct. Right. But you're dealing with companies Mm -hmm. that are in, you know, Los Angeles or that are in New York or whatever. And very few people are kind of there watching the store. In these, you know, like, what is this? Uh, this is Arizona, right? Mesa, Arizona. So so basically, it, it makes these kind of situations kind of easier to do because mm-hmm. there's nobody who's really, you know, d- they're not selling it themselves. They kind of have to put the trust in their a- the agent that's there. That Correct. They're going to do what's best for them. Well, another thing is with this, it was an all cash transaction. Right. Right. So there was no appraisal. Right. Right. Because right? then that would have been another thing where they... I mean, look. They would have had to justify. There would have been like, wait a second, this thing appraises for eight hundred thousand dollars. Wow! And you're buying it for five eighty. Like that doesn't sound right. Yeah. Right. So the fact that it was an all cash deal, usually cash deals go faster. Right. There's less ho- hoops to jump through versus you know working with a lender. Th- there were there were fewer get you know fewer uh, you know checkpoints right along the way. You know, I can't help but think that when this guy gets out, what do they say? It's between three to 12 years. Three to 12 years sentencing, yeah. Yeah, it's going to make for a really uncomfortable Thanksgiving <laughs> with mom and dad. <laughs> I know. Because, like, who, who was the person who came up with that idea? Yeah, exactly. Like, hey, son, <laughs> do you got any properties out there maybe <laughs> that, like, maybe we could do? Oh, dad, I don't know. Right. I really don't think it's like, nah, come on. Nobody would ever, you know, see that. Oh, honey, I think that's a great idea. Yeah, I think parents don't know anything about, it, you know, oh, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Very interesting. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? No, I think that's good. That's about it. No. Okay, cool. Well, we're here with uh, J.R. Mariano of uh, Jamie's Kitchen and Bath in San Gabriel. He, his work is absolutely spectacular. Uh, we're going to give you guys his uh, web address so you guys can check it out later on in the, in the, in the podcast. But it's, it's just really staggeringly beautiful stuff. Um, he's received the Best in Service Award from uh, Howes for every year since 2014. Uh, they are a Yelp top rated business and he's part of a new way of, of contractors that are really trying to change the way that the industry works and is perceived. JR, I am so glad to have you here. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much for inviting me. I appreciate it. Yeah. So, uh, basically every single time we have someone on for the first time, we ask them the same exact question every single time. 
where the hell have you been and how did you get here? <laughs> you know, I've been um, a contractor in Los Angeles since about 2008. And um, we've just been, you know, contracting has been a very, very old occupation, yeah. you know, because people have needed things. Built. Since the pyramids. Yeah, since the pyramids. <laughs> no, probably even, even before that. Yeah, cavemen needed doors. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so they, you know, so, um, but, um, you know, we just saw so many um, things that were practice in the in the practice that just needed upgrades yeah. and i think that you know when we came into it I, I was fairly young when i came into it and i just thought that there were so many uh much more things that can be done more efficiently in right. terms of just basic scheduling in terms of just yeah, basic and financing and stuff like that and i want to get into that right because yeah. i think that it's really um you know whenever anybody thinks about contractors and i, I mean i probably sure. don't even need to yeah. tell you this yeah. right yeah. there's kind of like a drop in their stomach because yeah. it's yeah. literally a horrible experience i, I very few circ uh, circumstances i've seen where it's like been this positive wonderful experience most of the time it's they don't show up they don't uh, tell you when they're coming uh they, are they working today i don't know they could be i don't know they're you know if they show up they show up um oh it's now you know 20 percent more than what we thought it was going to be all this kind of stuff so there's a really bad reputation that i think contractors have but i what i, I really love about your approach towards this is kind of acknowledging that yeah, right definitely yeah um you know we um Every, every person that comes in to meet with us, it's the first thing. It's like, listen, I've had a bad experience before. <laughs> my uncle's had a bad experience before. Listen, my dad has had a bad experience before. So am I going to have a bad experience with you? And I completely agree with you. It's mostly timing, if you think about it, right? Yeah. It's mostly timing. And the biggest nightmare you can do is give someone a, a large amount of money and then ha not have them show up the next yeah. day. I mean, I mean you would the, think that would be the minimum, right? Yeah, that's the minimum. At least show up, yeah, right? Or at least right. send somebody to show up. Right. But believe it or not, people will go to great lengths to try to just take your money and then go yeah. somewhere else. And I think based on the research I've seen and just being in this long enough, contractors, a lot of contractors take as much work as they can. Right. And sometimes the balancing of the funds doesn't necessarily equate mm. to where it is. So sometimes if you're going to give me a large amount of money, I might need that to cover another project. And that's why I'm not at your project. Right. And then I'm trying to chase this. So a lot of it has to do with finances and yeah. just being responsible with finances. And I would assume resources too. Absolutely. Uh, because yeah. it, it was uh, we had a really interesting conversation with uh, Ted Cotter, who was a mover, uh, moving person. Mm -hmm. And he said that literally on every Friday or something like that, or especially at the end of the month, they put all the jobs up on the board and they've taken more jobs than they can handle. Yes. And they literally pick, okay, I'll take that one because that's the most money. Yes, or that's, absolutely. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Absolutely. So you think that's a similar kind of thing? In terms yeah. Of yeah. I mean, it's pretty straightforward and it's pretty black and white. And, yeah. you know, it's just resources and manpower. And, you know, manpower... And when you're a contractor, there's a lot of things that has to do, you know, there's a lot of things you have to pay for. You have to pay for workman's comp. Yeah. You have to pay for general liability insurance. There's a lot of there's a lot of overhead that goes into being a contractor that people don't know about. All right, of course. So a lot of that has to be covered. But if, you know, it's, it's people say, well, you know, if you're doing more work, shouldn't you just get more manpower? First of all, your manpower is not tested. You don't know if they're going to do a good job. Right. You know. You don't know what their background is. And then secondly, you got to cover them. You got to make sure you're protected. Yeah. You know, so it's like you can't just say, okay, well, if I'm going to have another project, I'm going to take on another bathroom mall. I'm just going to hire more bathroom guys. But you have to yeah. understand, you're sending guys into somebody's house. Yeah. And then now you're worried about security. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden a laptop goes missing. Right. Right. All of a sudden this goes, you know, something, a some, uh, base gets broken. Yeah. And it's very easy for people to just say, oh, I, didn't, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. I didn't do this. So, yeah. you know, it's it's not as, you know, we're, we're always trying to focus on dealing with whatever we can handle. And yeah. I think that's why, you know, we always get the recognitions what we get because when we take on a client, we're all in, we're invested in that client. Yeah. And we're making sure somebody's there when they show up. Yeah. You know, when they need to be, we're making sure that if you're paying us money, we're going to do a good job for you yeah. because we want to change that stigma right. of being, there are good contractors out there. Right. And, you know, believe it or not, it does pay off. Right. It does pay off because like I said, you know, in California specifically, everybody's looking for a good contractor. Yeah, it's true. You know, and it's so easy to do a really good job for someone. And then having a neighbor call you the next, you know, the, the week after they're finished. You know, it's it's interesting because um, I'm seeing kind of a correlation here with what I, I used to, before I became a real estate agent, I was in the film and, uh, and television industry for about 20 years mm -hmm. doing visual effects, right? And was, mm -hmm. So you get these movies coming in that have like, I mean, and I'm not joking, like 800, 1,000 shots that are visual effects shots. And these companies would take on the work 
and literally it's like, well, get more people. But it's not about it's not about throwing bodies at the work yes. because you yeah. get them in and it's actually kind of a, you reduce if you get people who don't know what the heck they're doing, it actually creates more of a problem. And we found that one of the most one of the biggest kind of aha moments was, oh, we should actually say no to some of this. Yes. And I think, I mean, you've, I mean, we kind of chatted about this. You're kind of, that's very important to this whole process. It's extremely sometimes important. Sometimes saying no. Yeah. To be honest with you, it's um, being a contractor, it's, um, you know, the business itself, the nature of the business has a lot of peaks and valleys. Right. So during the summertime, most, all contractors are going to be busy because a lot of people want to do work while their children are off school. Right. Or while they're off on vacation. But during, and they're not in the house. Exactly. But during October, November, December, contractors are usually, it's a slower time for contractors because people don't want to rip out their kitchen before Thanksgiving. Yeah, right. You know, or before Christmas right. while they have people coming over. So it's hard. The, the biggest, you know, I started this, the hardest thing for me was to say no to bad clients to good clients, to just everybody. I had to say yes to everybody, but that spread us thin. And the moment you learn to start saying no to people and just allowing yourself to focus on the projects that you need to focus on, it's it's huge. It is yeah. a, it is a it is a great enlightening experience. Yeah. And I think most of the people, you know, let's give them credit. Let's just not say maybe they're not bad contractors. Maybe they just overbooked themselves. Yes, right. And maybe they just um, took on a couple, a little, you know, too many, too much work that they're used to. Right. That doesn't necessarily make them a bad contractor. Yeah. Because maybe they're doing fantastic work for another project. Sure. That we don't know about. Right. It just doesn't happen to be our project. Right. <laughs> so, Ron, you got something? Yeah, I was gonna say. So you know, we were talking to Jr. earlier, and you, you mentioned you turn down about seventy five percent. Yes. Uh, of do. the jobs. That that are out there. Yeah, 75%. And, yeah. and it's not just, you know, the price point where no, you decide that no. that's the, you know, person you're going to work with. It's more about the fit, right? Yes, absolutely. And I think, you know, um, as I had mentioned to you earlier when we were talking, it's um, when clients come into your office, you just know when you're going to have a good dynamic with each other. You already know exactly when a client comes in, what they're expecting of you and what your expectations are of them. And if, you know, if everything works out together, if the relationship starts off on a good foot, then, you know, the project is probably going to go smoothly. Right. But if, you know, you're you're starting there and you're butting heads with each other yeah. and you're saying, you know, this is what I think you should do. And they're saying, no, 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 this is what I think I should do. Yeah. And you're saying, well, this is not really going to work for your space. Or like, no, 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 I want to make it work for my space. All of a sudden, you already know eventually when you try to build what it is that you're trying to do, it's not going to work. Yeah. And then someone's going to get upset and then someone's not going to pay. Right. Yeah. So then there's issues with that. So. Right. Um, you're absolutely right. We turn down a lot of clients, not because, and you know, first of all, we're we're blessed to have the amount of people inquiring about our company and wanting to work with us. We're totally grateful for that. But when I say we turn down a lot of clients, it's just because we feel like it's better off for us to work with the ones that we fit with the best and give them a hundred percent of our attention. Yeah. That way, we're working with the service. And we've also realized that when it comes to construction, people will. If you're a good contractor, people will wait for you. Yeah. You know because. If a person is sitting there and they haven't remodeled their kitchen since 1980, you know, what's another eight months waiting right. for a good contract? Absolutely. You know, so there's nothing wrong with that. So sometimes we say, you know what, we can't work with you now. It's January, but we're going to be available to work with you in August. Most people are like, that's fine. I haven't remodeled my kitchen for 20 years anyway. So I'll wait for you, you yeah. know, because I've heard great things about you. So yeah. that's what I mean by saying no to most of our clients. Right. And the ones that do, um, that can't take it, then, you know, yeah. that's... Sorry, you know. So, in in terms of, and I think that even especially for what I uh, what I do and what Ron does, communication is such a huge kind of thing. Are are you guys doing anything in terms of how you communicate better than most contractors? Like how you like? It seems kind of like a leading question, but sure. but do you understand what I'm saying in yeah, terms absolutely. of making sure that everybody's in the loop? Yeah, absolutely. When we start a project, we always have to give all our clients kind of a schedule you know, a matrix of what we're going to be doing, when we're going to be doing, how long it's going to be taking. And we always give ourselves a little bit of leeway depending on how it but is. But that's smart. I mean, that just makes sense. Yeah, because then clients have an expectation. And we always, we're always conservative with our expectations. For example, you know, we say, okay, we're going to start the demolition of your kitchen and bathroom. This is going to take about four days, right? Most of the time we'll finish it in two days. But at least when we start on a Monday, they'll know that that week we're doing demolition. The following week, we're going to start building your cabinetry. We're going to start doing electrical, et cetera, et cetera. Then they know exactly what it is that we're doing. And we're always emailing clients. You know, we're always free with emailing clients. We're always giving them a schedule. And our payments and our payment schedules are coordinated with the work that goes through. So the way Jamie's Kitchen and Bath handles payments is that we don't want to get paid until we finish... Um, what is it like a, a marker of right. work? A threshold. A threshold of work. Yeah. yeah. So 
when we're finished demo, then you could pay us then. Right. When we install your floors, then you could go ahead and make the next payment. So that helps everybody because not only do they know when their work is going to be finished, but it allows them to prepare their finances ahead of time. Right, of course. Instead of you just saying, um, well, you knew it was coming. Monday. Yeah, hey, listen, I need the check tomorrow. Right. It's like, well, well hold on, let me prepare my finances. Right. You know? So we give them a heads up and it allows people to kind of prepare Make them, make them understand, okay, well, you know what? JR is going to be done with the cabinetry next week. Let's go ahead and get that money ready. Right. So not only are they getting the finances ready, they already know that they're getting it ready because the cabinetry is going to be ready. Right, right. So let's just start with the kind of the process, like how it yep. starts from beginning to end. Like, so I come to you, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. assuming that it's different for most people. Like it's, it's all over the place. Yes, absolutely. But, but what is the preferential pipe, pipeline for what you like to see happen? Perfect. So uh, most people come to us first with a design idea. Yeah. You know, they, you know, with technology these days, you have great websites like House, Pinterest, right. Google Images, Getty Images. And most of the time, people come up to me and say, I want my kitchen to look like this. And they show me a picture of white cabinetry, Italian marble, you know, subway tile backsplash, a very classic looking, you know, kitchen with a farmhouse sink and whatnot. Right. And then they show me a picture of their existing kitchen. And they say, <laughs> can you make this look, look like, like that? that? So that's usually the start of it. Right. And then um, for us, you know, being a new wave of contractor, we are more focused on design. Yeah on the design aspect of your remodel right. as much as we are in the mechanical aspect. Right. Now, you know, during the time, you know, in the older days, you would have to have a separate architect to do the space planning. Right. You would have an interior designer to choose the colors and the materials. You would have a contractor to execute the build. But with Jamie's Kitchen and Bath, we're more of an all-in-one show. Okay. Look, we'll design it for you. We'll, we so you take it all the way from design all the way down yeah, to we're design execution. Build. Exactly. We, you know, you don't need necessarily an architect because we we have experience with space planning. You know, as a general B1 licensed California contractor, I'm licensed to build a house from the ground up. So I have experience with space planning. Right. So it helps save a lot of time. And also it's the communication is a lot easier. You're dealing with one person. Right. I think the one thing that people like about the way we do business is like, we don't have to deal with the designer who's going to take time and then we have to communicate with the designer to the architect. So it's like it's easier for them to just deal with one person directly and yeah. allow them to pay, basically communicate their ideas and get right. feedback and instant response. Well, and, and I would think that the, the positive also for that is is that you, you've you had such great experience yes, at this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can have an architect come in that while in theory does great work and yes. whatever like that, but the actual practical, maybe he's never done just a bathroom remodel or a exactly. kitchen remodel. Yeah. So exactly. you guys know because you've been through it. You know, it's funny you mentioned that because one of the biggest traits that um, we do in our office is I say, look, if there was a design mistake that happened in one of our projects or something, you know, something was just kind of designed off like a when you open this dishwasher, it happens to hit one of the drawers. Yeah. We have to make a very, very specific note of that for future projects. So when a client says, I want my dishwasher next to this cabinet, we already know from experience that, look, if you do it this way, it's going to hit that drawer when you open it. Right. You know, so we share all that information, all that experience in the yeah. future. So I'm not trying to say that sometimes there are mistakes made by us, but everyone makes mistakes sometimes when it comes to design. Of course. But we know that in the future, we will try to avoid this ma mistakes because of the experience that we have. Right. Ron, you had something? Yeah, I was going to say, you know, you know, so with your background, it's really interesting because, you know, in the past you had mentioned that. You know, when you look at contractors, you know, they come from more of a mechanical background. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And mm -hmm. and you're you actually come from a business background. Yes, absolutely. Right. Yeah. And, you know, it's so funny because, you know, and, and Tom, you come from an entertainment background. Yeah. I come from a marketing background and, and you know, and, and working wealth management before. And, you know, coming into the industries that we did, uh, you know, the fact that we all came from different places. I remember when I first got into lending. Well, it's definitely not business as usual. I'll tell well, you that. No, but, but but the thing is, like <laughs> when I got into lending, the bar was so low. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's like it, it kind of destroyed the industry, Ron. <laughs> well, no, but I mean the fact yeah, that know. you know just customer service. Yeah. Like people were amazed that I actually returned a phone call. Yeah. Or the fact that you know that I said what I was going to do, and yeah. you know all of these things, and and it's the same thing in in Jr. in your line of business. It's like. You know, I think it's I think it's partially because of just the the type of person. You know, they're very they're kind of like you know appraisers, yeah. right? Where they're very much in their head. They're very technical, and they they don't have that same you know finesse. They don't have that same savvy when it comes to business. You know, they don't they don't see the customer service aspect. They see it as a project, and you know, 
I'll get to your thing when I have time to get to it. Right. Is that kind of, that's absolutely correct. I think just speed and time is of the essence when it comes, if, if I was to give advice to a new contractor or to an old contractor that says, what can I do to be a better contractor? Just be on time. You know, it's so, <laughs> you know, I've dealt with contractors, right? So sometimes I get work done in my house and my wife knows this, that when there's work to be done in my house, I like to hire different contractors, even mm. though I'm capable of doing my sure. own roofing or my own concrete. I like to hire. So you're, that's interesting. And, I actually find that interesting. Yeah. And I like that because I like to see what's out there. I like sure. to see what rates are. And I'm always, my wife always tells me like, I always pay fair yeah. or above than I'm used to. Sure. I like that. I like doing that. Yeah. I know I could get concrete work on, uh, done on my driveway for 5000 but the guy's going to charge me 6500 But if I feel that he's going to do a great job, yeah. I'm going to tell him, like, you know, right. I'll, I'll pay you the 6500 just do a right. good job. And you know what? He does a great job. Well, and you know, it's funny that you, so, so funny you mentioned that. I think this is uh, kind of related here, is like, my wife and I, we'll, we'll like go on Yelp, right? Yep. And we'll sure. like, if we're like in a city and we're like, oh, we're hungry, right? Yep. And we'll sure. go, oh, you know what? Let's go check the top of Yelp. Yeah, right. Sure. Yeah. And we will literally find these, you know, places with one dollar sign. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And you go, and the food is absolutely terrible. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. absolutely terrible. You're like, how can anybody give that that any kind of stars to this thing? Right. Sure. Then I'll go to a place that has three dollar signs. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. But it has the best meal I've ever had. Sure. Yeah. And it's and it's literally like it's about value. Yes. It's like every time you look at that, what you say, the concrete in your driveway, yep. every time you look at it, you get a little extra special glow. It's yep. worth that extra $1,500 to yeah. get some shitty thing put in for, you know, four grand. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, there's a saying in contracting where it's like, you could always get things done cheaper, but at what cost is it going to, yeah. you know, take? So speed is of the essence. Like there's contractors I've worked with where, you and know. And by the way, I'm sorry, can I inter interrupt? Sure. Maybe not speed, but expedience. Because yes. Because yeah. speed implies like, oh, we're just doing it to get no, it no, over. No, 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 exactly. You yeah. know what I mean? Expedience, and yeah. I don't, and yeah. I don't get that vibe from the work I've seen that you do is, is that it's really about a very knowledgeable approach to it that sure. is efficient. Sure. And gets yeah. it done on time. Sure. Yeah. And you know, most people, a lot, of, a lot of people out there will just say, you know what, the average time it takes to do something is one month. So by rule of thumb, they will take all 30 days to do it. But in reality, yeah. it'll take 14 days. You can do it. Yeah. But because they don't want to mess up what they're used to, then they're going to stick with that 30 days. Right. So I've seen work. I've caught, I've caught people out saying, you know, we're getting some sheet metal done. Yeah. And, you know, for this kind of sheet metal, this amount, it's a three-week project. And I've, ca I've caught people where I've gone to the house just to put another order in. And my project was done in about six days. Yeah. But they're not going to deliver it to me until that three week timeline because that's what they're that's what right. they want the expectation to be set at right and i'm i don't like that yeah. so i'm kind of changing that in a sense where it all ties into what ron said you know i'm saying no to 75 percent of my clients you know but i'm saying yes to the 25 but the sooner i could finish your project the sooner i could move on to the next project right and keep going well and you also get the, appear the appearance of under promising and over delivering yes exactly you know exactly, because yeah. you're what you're doing is is you're exceeding people's expectations i am yeah yeah and if and you, that's you a, read what's gold yeah what our reputation is we're always going above and beyond but we're very conservative in our estimates we're always going to tell you it doesn't make any sense for me when a contractor says it's a, you know what i'll do this in four to five weeks. I know yeah. it's going to take them eight weeks, right. but it's like, I don't, I don't think they realize that at, they haven't evolved to a point where it's like, dude, just tell them it's going to take you eight weeks. Because if you tell them four to five weeks, are you really just trying to get the deal? Yeah. It's like people try to use that just to get the contract signed. Well, and, and on the real estate side, you know, we have, when we go to listing appointments, right, it's actually price. It's not necessarily time. Sure. Right. Yeah. So you have folks, and, and this is why, why I say no. And people are surprised that people say no to listings, right? Because <laughs> it's so, you know, it's like what we do, right? Yes, sure, and yeah. uh, if we don't do anything, we don't make money. Sure. Yeah. But the thing is, is that there are, there are agents that will go into a listing appointment and you know they'll do their 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 comps on the area and they'll sure, say oh you yeah. know what it's uh, i think you should sell it a million right sure, yeah. and they're like and they've got the people on the other side going oh i think it's 1.2 right yeah and they'll go okay we'll do it right okay. and then what happens is is that then it sits on the market and everybody's disappointed the client's disappointed the agent's disappointed and all because somebody didn't just have the Balls to say, look, no, this is what it's going to be. If you don't want to do it, fine. Let's shake our hands. We'll meet later. Sure. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I'm, you know, I don't understand where this comes from. I don't understand exactly where this logic comes from. But I think it's like a, it's like someone, someone did it, and it's like they're, they're not, they don't want to break the habit. Yeah. 
It's like maybe someone taught them that way. Maybe their mentor taught them that way. Yeah. Maybe they're just get the deal. Yeah. The and then deal. you know, I was I was trained under um, a couple of people, so I had mentored under a couple of con uh, contractors, and they were great contractors. So they're still great contractors. But what I did when I was mentoring under them is, um, or I was learning under them is, I learned what it was that they were the weakest on. So mm -hmm. one of my first mentors, his his scheduling was absolutely horrendous. Right. Like it's not even close. It's like he's not even an hour late. He's like three hours late. I don't right. really understand how that happens. Right. You know? right. My other mentor, um, his biggest um, was finances. Like he didn't know how to separate finances. Yeah. You know, he also drove an S five hundred Mercedes as a contractor, so it didn't make any sense right. why he was driving that kind of car. You know, yeah. I don't, he, it was funny watching him try to put drywall in his trunk. So, um, <laughs> but when it, um, you know, so I kind of learned from these people. Um, and I just evolved and yeah. I just tried to say, okay, we're not going to do this. We're going to do this. We're not going to do this. We're, we're going to do this. And right. I think it's critical to have brick and mortar. You know, one of the advice I always tell people, it's like, I'm, I'm bidding with another contractor and I really want to work with you. And I tell them, okay, that's great. Does the other contractor, how did you find him? So we found him from a family friend, whatever. Okay, great. Does he have an office you could go visit physically just yeah. in case, you know, if, you know, you have questions or you want to drop off samples? It's like, no, he's just got a cell phone. Mm. Okay. So the biggest problem with that is it's very easy to turn off a cell phone. Yeah. It's very easy to not pick up calls. Absolutely. It's very easy to change a number. Yeah. But when you have a brick and mortar office, it's been Somebody there for a long time. sleep on your front step. Yeah. <laughs> and and wait you. for you and say, where's my faucet? <laughs> right. You know? so exactly. How come you haven't? So it's a little bit different. And right. I think our advantage is towards that. We have a small showroom in San Gabriel, mm -hmm. right? It's actually on Rosemead. Uh, and it's in Rosemead. And, um, but it's on San Gabriel Boulevard. But the the benefit of that showroom is just to make people comfortable yeah. that they have something they I mean, can touch. You're not touch going anywhere. We're not going anywhere. We've yeah. been there for a long time and we're not moving anywhere. And it's right. a very small place. It's only about 1,500 square feet, but it's very well designed. Yeah. Like if you want to see something, you're going to find it. If you want to see, the way we designed it is everything is there. You could see it, you could touch it. And some people walk in and they'll say like, this is it. This is the famous <laughs> Jamie showroom. You know, like, Where's where's everything else? And they walk to the back, and I'm like, no, this is it. Right. But most people will understand. They'll walk in. They'll say like, this is great. Yeah. You know, this is a great showroom. This is a beautiful showroom. Right. And believe it or not, the ones that say this is it, like those are the ones that are, the vibe isn't right anyway to right. begin with. Right. You know, they're right. shopping or it's like they want to be wild. Right. And the ones that are saying this is great, I, you know, thank you for showing me. These are the million dollar contracts. Yeah. You so know? really quickly, uh, just. Um, what would you say would like to, when you're talking about shopping? Because sure. I mean, it's look, shopping versus pricing. Let's say sure. shopping yeah. is the what we would exp is the kind of per, uh, pejorative, which is kind of like you know I'm just trying to find the cheapest price, yeah. right? Yeah. And then there's pricing, which is finding that kind of I'm looking for talent as well as what the the I have the money for, sure. right? Yep. What do you what would you recommend for folks who uh, who don't go to your specific place, but to look for in a contractor? Like what would, would what would you be asking them other than do they have a place that's you know that that's a brick and mortar? Sure, uh, response time is critical. Um, and Ron, you didn't warn me. I should have brought a dictionary because a lot I didn't know. <laughs> you know, there's things. It's like I'm gonna have to look it up. Uh, Google or something. Pejorative, you know, meaning like the kind of negative leaning okay, kind it. of. Yeah. yeah, you know, just kind of like that's the nasty way of okay, saying yeah. that somebody wants to get a good price. You yeah, know. I understand. Yeah, yeah. Um, definitely response time is quick. If um, the contract. By God, good. I hope I got that word right. Because imagine <laughs> people listening and going, he's like he's defending this this to total like wrong word choice. Yeah. Tom, you were correct on that answer. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I think definitely um, response time is critical. Okay. You know, if a guy um, responds to you in a timely manner right. or if at least, listen, you don't have to get back with a bid, but yeah. let them know that you're working on it. Listen, yeah. you know, I'm a little bit busy right now. I'm working on a bid. Someone had asked me the other day, right? They said, JR, you know, I'm feel I want to work with you. I really do. But, you know, I'm a little concerned because... You know, I call you on a Monday, and the soonest you could meet with me is on a Thursday or on a Friday. Like, you know, is this how it's going to happen when we end up working? And I say, well, you know, where do you think I am Monday through Thursday? Yeah. And they're like, well, I don't know. Yeah. You know, it's like, I'm at the project. Yeah. Right? Right. So let me ask you a question. When I start working on your project, right? Yeah. Do you want me on your project, or do you want me in the office bidding new projects? Talking to somebody else. Yeah. And that at that moment they're like okay i understand yeah and they never question after that they yeah. said okay i'll well let's work together let's figure this out right you know so a lot of people you know these days it's a, a very me generation yeah so it's like they expect like if they make the drive out to come and see you right they expect everything out of you so believe it or not you know even though our showroom is in you know san gabriel 
people come from Bel Air. People have come from Malibu to see me. Sure. People have come from all different parts of the United, you know, not not the United States, but Cal- Southern California, right. who have never been to the San Gabriel Valley, <laughs> and they ask me when they're there, like, "What do I do around here?" It's like, "Oh, do you like Chinese?" Yeah, I was about to say, you know, because this has the best Chinese. <laughs> and, and my, since my wife is Chinese, yeah. I I know very well exactly. about how good and the and Chinese. Exactly. And if if they don't ask me, they already know. It's like. Oh, I know there's great Chinese around. You got to tell me where it is. So I have a handful of restaurants. I always send Baldwin them to Baldwin Avenue. Exactly. I, I want that list. Yeah. So we send them there. But, um, you know, we have so many people that come, but everyone expects to be waited on hand and foot. It's like, sure. I made the journey. I'm yeah. here now. Show me everything. Right. But we can't necessarily do that for everybody. We can't necessarily take the time because I always tell, here's another thing. Yeah. Contractors don't put enough importance on their existing clients sometimes they put mm. more importance on new clients right but your existing clients are the important ones well, they're the ones that are paying the you the burden checks. that with bird in the hand and against the two in the bush right so yes, basically exactly. they're reaching for the two in the bush instead of taking care of that one person exactly. who is actually giving them their their food and their you know exactly when yeah. i come into the office i've got a list of people i gotta call and i look at these people right and they say this one wants a quote, this one wants a bid, this one's ready for your approval for the bid. It's like, I put that list aside. I don't even look at that list. I just look at what does our yeah. clients, our existing clients need right now? What do they need so ordered? Huge. You know, that is huge, but a lot of people don't put but enough I, emphasis I think that, that that's that's something that's kind of changing, and I can't believe I'm saying this. In the, And I think that there was, you know, back in the 50s and the 60s, uh, more of that. Uh, like of people, course, yeah. people were like, you know, you had the, you'd drive up into a gas station and five guys would jump out and do your, you know, windshield sure. and all that yeah. kind of thing. It was all service. about service. Yep. Customers never wrong, that kind of thing. And sure. then somewhere in the 70s and 80s and 90s, it just kind of all fell apart, where yeah. you walk into McDonald's and you're like, this guy doesn't even want to wait on me, sure. right? Kind of yeah. thing. And I think that that's going to be a huge step into the future. And I think that the, and, and I'm going to talk, I want to t- uh, discuss a little bit more about what technologies possibly are, mm-hmm. are coming into play sure. more and more in your industry. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think that technology is going to bring that kind of client experience to the forefront where people, yeah. how they experience your business is going sure. to be a huge deal. Yeah, right. Absolutely, absolutely. Because and especially because there's so so many things like Yelp yep. and all this thing where the reviews can yep. very easily cut you down just, to size. Just everything is Google. Yeah. So you know, Yelp was based off Google. You know how everything is just Google. It's like search yeah. engine based or Yahoo, right? Yeah. But people always ask me this. They always say, "Can a robot do your job?" Yeah. Can a robot be a contractor and do this? And I say no. I think personally as a contractor because I'm personally technologically savvy you know i have the newest phones um newest technology whatever is in i was telling ron earlier we're and i believe this i truly believe this we are the first contractor that use an ipad you really think so i for sure wow and i I, i'll tell you why because i was the first i was one of the first people to get an ipad when it came out yeah (laughs) and the moment i got my ipad my wife i used to go around carrying a photo album do you remember photo albums yeah sure you know i used to go to cvs or target yeah next page yeah so my pages would have okay the bathrooms are on this section the kitchens are on this section right the granite's on this section the moment i got my ipad right i transferred and i scanned all those photos and i organized them on the ipad and i got a software, basically a sketch software. It had nothing to do with contracting. Yeah. But I uploaded a template and I started putting it uh, using that sketch software using, a, what do you call those pens, those iPad pens? Stylus. Yeah. Styluses, Stylus. yeah, 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 when yeah. they first came out. Yeah. And I was drawing things on a stylus and writing, you know, ceiling heights, window heights, right. plumbing heights, and then showing the iPad. And people were absolutely blown away by that. Wow. They were absolutely blown away with so, that. So what do you see as kind of the future? Like what do you see your business kind of moving towards in terms of more embracing that technology? You know, it, it's tough because you know, like I had mentioned, this whole conversation started with saying, can a robot replace what you do? And I say no because in construction there are so many factors that yeah. come into you know, we don't we have in California specifically all the houses are different. Yeah. I mean, you have you can go down a block and you'll see a Spanish it's so true. next to a Mediterranean, next to a craftsman. Very little consistency. Right? There's yeah. no consistency. Yeah. I mean, obviously, if when you go to track homes, like places like Walnut. Right, where there's only two or three choices. Down, Absolutely, exactly, yeah. Right. But most of the times, you don't know when houses. And, you know, in California and in anywhere in Los Angeles, you know, some one house was built in 1920, one was built in 1980, one was built in 2000. Right. All in the same row, right? Yeah. So you don't know exactly what it is. So I think... Um, a lot of the technology has to do with just education mm. and learning stuff. Now, recently, for example, our company, we we had become EPA certified contractors. So we had to go through a class and understand what it took to become an EPA certified remodeler. 
you know, because everything is about safety. Yeah. Everything's about the environment. Everything's about using, you know, non lead based items, and making right. sure you're, you know, I check for that stuff. So the scanners that they have, right? Just, just as simple as a vacuum, right? There is a specific vacuum. It's called the HEPA vacuum, where when you're sucking dirt in, it's blowing clean air out. Mm. HEPA filtered clean air. So okay. stuff like that is technology. And this is like a $500 vacuum. Right. You know, you're thinking, why can't I just get a shop back at a Home Depot? Right. Because when you're vacuuming the dusty floors and you're vacuuming all you're, that construction dust, it's just out blowing filth. out yeah. the same amount of dust. So right. if you're vacuuming lead-based dust, then uh, lead is going back up into the air. Oh, so you actually need things to filter things out like HEPA vacuums. So right. In terms of technology, I think it's going more towards tools and accuracy. Right. You know, tape measures. I still like the the very handy tape measure, but I also have laser levels and I have laser measures that are more accurate. Right. You know, to the to the T as opposed to what I'm doing. So in terms of tools, that's where I think I see a lot of technologies going towards. What about like um, man-made materials in, in terms of... Oh, absolutely. Like, yeah. I mean... Uh, you know what I mean? Like... Things are definitely more sustainable now. Right. You know, we are not, you know, using a lot of, like a lot of wood materials, a lot of countertop materials. I know you guys had a countertop company come in here yeah. and they were talking about quartz and quartz is amazing because not only is it not, you know, versus granite and marble, not only is quartz basically bulletproof. Mm. It's non-porous. It's very good for the environment. It's sustainable. It emits zero radiation and mm -hmm. zero like stuff like that. So right. a lot of the materials are good, like green board and, you know, hardy back. All this stuff is good because everything's a lot more safer. Right. You know, my, my wife's father is a master builder in, in Europe, in Scotland, and he has to deal with a lot of these asbestos related sure, health issues absolutely because they weren't wearing masks and yeah. they weren't doing you know they were just basically working in it heading yep. in it into you know during the 50s and 60s yeah and these days a lot of the materials like for example paint yeah in california the paint has like zero ppc which is basically super clean wow. and this is the standard now you can't use oil-based paint you can't use certain things oh wow the the negative about that is it's not as durable as it used to be oh Got it. You know, like oil-based paint, well, you could put it on boats yeah. and go across the Atlantic and come back and the paint is still good. <laughs> right. You know, you put, you know, zero PPC paint on the side of a boat, by the time you come back, that, right. that thing is gone. You got to be know? painting it in the middle of the Atlantic. Yeah, exactly. Right. So yeah. it's a little bit different in that sense. So yeah, this is where I see it going. But in terms of people are always introducing new apps to me saying, JR, do you think this, this app will work for your construction business? And when it comes to organization and financing, yeah. Mm. But in terms of actually replacing a responsibility of a contractor who needs to be able to think and adjust on the fly, I don't think we're close to that yet. Ron, you had something? Yeah, so was, we've talked about this on the podcast a couple times, but you know, some technology that's coming to mind is augmented reality and virtual <laughs> reality, right? So you have Matterport where you can kind of walk through the house with your mouse and that whole thing. And I think that's pretty pretty fascinating. Amazing, yeah. And then you have augmented reality where you know you can stage that particular chair in your own living room, yep. right? So you take a picture and then, or you know, in your case, it could be the new kitchen, kitchen, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. So do you what do the you new encounter? sink looks like? And yeah, encounter that. You know what? Absolutely. I think that um, I didn't think about that until you brought it up. But yeah, I've definitely seen where even just when I'm shopping online for a carpet, you could actually place that carpet in your living room by taking a picture of your living room and seeing what the carpet looks like or the rug looks like. Right. So, yeah, I mean, it, it hasn't been something I've done yet, but I think it would be absolutely amazing for what I can do because more and more people are becoming more visual. You know, clients yeah. tell me every single time, look, Jerry, I'm a visual person. Can you show me this? But yeah. our software right now currently, Ron, is 3D base so everything is a complete 3d software so i could put colors i could actually put i've the coolest thing i've done with my software is there was a shorter client that we dealt with and she was concerned about how to reach the cabinets on the uppers mm. so i got her height and i got her specs and i put <laughs> it into my software right. and showed her uh, with her arms up if she could reach that cabinet above wow. her microwave wow. and since she couldn't reach it i had to lower the microwave cabinet oh wow so we actually did that before so yeah it's i think that can definitely benefit us it's not something i've looked into because again we're more focused not so much on involving our company but making sure that the clients that we signed with are taken care of right. that is our priority and i will right. tell you that over and over again like it is our priority. Yeah, and I think another, you know, follow up to that is okay, so you put that particular carpet in that area yep. or you put the cabinets where they are. The technology is not going to replace the human element no. to see yeah. if that will actually fit within you know where it's realistic. Sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, you know, there's a lot of 
online lenders out there like Rocket Mortgage where sure. you can just, you know, apply online. But if you don't have the human element to actually look at the file and, you know, make sure that that document doesn't go to the underwriter or, sure. you know, you know, you, you want to make sure that you do have that human element because you, you want to be able to see how that works in, in real life. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So and contracting is about trust. And I'm sure in your occupation, Tom, in your oh, occupation, absolutely. Ron, it's everything. It's, you don't, you want to work with someone you like. Yeah. You won't, you can't, you know, you don't want to work with someone you don't like. Right. So it's like, you know, you meet someone, you know, a dentist. It's like, oh, I like this dentist. He's great. You know, yeah. uh, I like this contract. A lot of people want to work with me because I'm very easygoing. And it's like, listen, I'm not going to tell you what you want. It's your kitchen. You're going to have to be there for the next 20 years. Right. So I'm not going to force that onto you. It, it still baffles me to this day that contractors are like, they come in, they're like, you're going to put this, you're going to put that, you're going to do that. I've been doing this for 30 years. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. You're going to do that. Yeah. Right. And then they leave, right? And the lady tells me, it's like, he didn't even listen to me. He didn't even ask me what I wanted. Right. He didn't even ask me that, you know, what I wanted to put on. Right. When I come into a project or I come into a home, I don't say anything. I just say, you know, what is it that you want to do? Yeah. And I let them do all the talking. Maybe that's about, if our, if our meeting is one hour, it's about 40 minutes of them talking. The rest of the 20 minutes is just me kind of listening, taking notes, and then trying to see what to do. When I want to execute a design or do something, I do that in the office and I present it to them at the office. Right. But I don't interrupt them or I don't take, you know, I let them do all the talking because I understand what they need. Right. And some people, they need a specific space. Look, you know, my brother's disabled. He needs to be able to bring his wheelchair through this through this island. Is it going to fit around this island? Right. You know, um, there's only two of us now. Do we need a refrigerator this big? Right. My kids have moved out. So I listen to all this stuff. Yeah. You know? So from there, we give them exactly what it is they need so that... On, you know, on our side as a secret, if they're not happy with it, a lot of them was their feedback, you know? So, yeah, right. You know, listen, you, you know, told me, you told me you wanted it like this, right. but I'm not, I'm not going to say that I'm always going to give feedback. I'm right. always going to say, this is too small. This is too big. I don't think this is going to work. But again, at the end of the day, we are service oriented and it is right. the customer is right. It is what the customer wants because we're not going to be there. Now, I mean, having, but having looked at your website here, sure. I, I think you're kind of downplaying the artistry behind what you do yeah, yeah and i think that there's something that Thank you. Yeah. it's it's a lot about yeah you know, yes i'm sure that there's a lot that the client has to say and sure. they want that and this and that so how do you do that dance between um what they want what is uh aesthetically what you know from doing so many sure. what works and what is good sure and and how, and the functionality of of actually achieving that yeah so it's kind of three prongs here i think it's experience so people are surprised that I tell them, you know, I've designed a kitchen or a bathroom a day for like 11 years. <laughs> okay. Right? So, so done when, it a few times. Yeah. So if people ask me, it's like, you think this is going to fit? And I say, you know, I've, I think, I think it's going to fit. I mean, I've designed a kitchen a day for like 11 years. They're like, most of them are like, oh, okay. And then they shake their head. Yeah. You know, at that point you're like, okay, if this guy has done it for so long. So when, you know, we always want to try to, every project is part of our portfolio. Yeah. If I do a really good job with Ron's bathroom, I'm hoping that Tom is going to love Ron's bathroom so much he's going to say, I want Ron's bathroom. Right. But I want you to tweak this. Right. So as we're working with clients, we are introducing things that are nice because clients also trust me. They're like, look, I like this. I like marble, but I know that a lot of people don't like marble. If I want to sell this house in five years, do you think this is going to look good? Yeah. And I tell them, no, this is not going to look good. Right. It might look good for you now, but five years down the line, I think this is not going to transcend. So Jamie's Kitchen and Bath is very much focused on designs that are transcending. Yeah. My best-selling designs are the ones that were designed in 1910 and wow. 1920. You know, white shaker cabinets, right? White Carrera marble and subway tile. I mean, what was the origin of Subway Town? <laughs> Probably you know, the subways. Yeah, the yeah. subways, yeah, when they were first built. Yeah. And that is my classic design. And the right. reason why, I say, look, it's 2018. We're picking materials that were designed over 100 years ago, but yeah. have transcended the design of time. Have, have you ever like had like somebody come with you and say, like, look, I want this, yeah. right? Yep. And you just go, you are freaking crazy. No, like, never. Never, really. Never. So you so, find some way to incorporate it in? Yeah. I mean, sometimes, you know, I've done purple cabinets Ooh, boy. for people. I've Woo. done very glittery things. I've done mirrors in kitchens. Wow. You know, like someone wants mirrors all over their cabinets and kitchens wow. so they can see themselves cook. 
So I've seen this, but we have, we have. It's, it's kind of different from the whole, you know, mirror above the bed kind yeah, of thing. No. It's like they have a fetish for food, yeah, I guess. But you know what? We, we just tone it down. Oh, okay. We tone it down in the sense, okay, instead of having mirrors on 100% of the kitchen, we're going to put mirrors strategically in places where you could see yourself cooking. Got it. Or, you know, picking up whatever you want to pick up. They want to be their, on their own cooking show. Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, the purple cabinets. Okay, we're not going to use like Barney purple, <laughs> but we'll use like this. Prince bare, purple. No. <laughs> yeah, a little bit something warmer. Yeah. But it'll still, you're still getting their purple. Right. You know, but it's, right. it's a little, it, and then by the time it comes up, it's actually very cool. Yeah. It actually turned out nice. But, it, you know, originally they brought me Barney purple. Yeah. Which was like a fuchsia, I think. is what, Wow. <laughs> you know, and I was like, no, nah, but then I introduced them this and they're like, Oh yeah, great. And then, yeah. you know, so that's what we do, but we, you know, we say no to certain things, we draw the line on certain things. Yeah. But when we say no to you, Tom, yeah. We don't feel, you know, I don't want you to feel like you're getting rejected. I just right. feel like I'm giving you uh, maybe another option that sure. might get what you're you're doing But in now, sense. how do you feel that you kind of trained your aesthetic taste? So that I mean, I, I guess yeah. it's trial and error, of course, yes, as of you've course, gone yeah. through yeah. whatever years. But, I mean, what do you think that process was? I mean, because, I mean, there is a, a definite skill. Of yes, course, you've yes. got a license to show that you've of got course. the skill. Sure. But there's got to be an artistry behind it. Yeah, there is. So um, our background and my family, so my brother's an architect. Uh, oh, my, so that's interesting. Okay, yeah, so my, my brother who passed away, Jamie, who I named the store after, he was an illustrator, a fantastic illustrator. Mm -hmm. My older brother um, went to UCLA LA for engineering. So and we had a lot of art in our in our family right so a lot of the artistry came from kind of genetics in terms of what we just you know <laughs> just well, in the genes yeah just in the genes but also um we had a passion for art we yeah. always had a passion for design we always had a passion if you go to my house my house has everything mid-century so i'm a mm. huge um herman miller guy i have herman miller pieces everywhere oh wow uh, eames i love eames i love vitra i love all that stuff so Mid-century to me is absolutely like the best, like that was the best era of design in my opinion. <laughs> but let me, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I'm hearing all this and I'm going, this person is actually like, you spend time investing on your own kind of knowledge yes. of things. Like, yes. you know, it's not just about a day job you go to, but you actually have things that you're passionate about yeah. that are, absolutely. you know what I mean? Absolutely. Are, like, you know, when I traveled and I go to museums, you know, when I go visit um, museums, all when, if I'm going to the Louvre in Paris, I'm not looking at just the Mona Lisa. I'm yeah. looking at the structure of how the Louvre right. was created. It's sure. unbelievable. Like oh, the yeah. upside down pyramid, it's yeah. unbelievable. When I'm going to, you know, different Kelvin Grove in Scotland, I'm looking at their architecture. You know, when I go to Scotland, I see all the roofs are, you know, they're that burnt color or green. And I was like, why are all the roofs green in Scotland? It's because it's, it used to be copper and all the rain turned them oh, green. Wow. And I thought that they, they tinted them green because it was like a look, like when you go to Greece, things are blue you right. know, because they paint them blue, but it's actually green because of the copper. So I study all this stuff. I, right. When I'm in this office with you guys today, I'm studying the architecture. I'm looking at the ceiling and I'm looking at the floors. And I'm, you know, so I'm constantly looking at things and I'm right. constantly, you know, bring things up. I have one of my favorite clients. His name is Henry. This guy, He'll send me a picture of him sitting on a camel in Marrakesh, 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 mm. sorry, Marrakesh. Yeah. And then he'll send me a picture of him skiing in like Switzerland. Mm -hmm. And he'll send me another picture from, he, this guy's just crazy, right? Right. So his house, when we design his house, he comes up with so many ideas. Yeah. And it inspires me. And I'm like, how did you come up with this design? How did you come up with this design? How did you come up? He's like, I saw this in a hotel in Casablanca. Wow. I saw this in a hotel in Istanbul. I saw this in a park in, in London. And he just tells me all these things. And yeah. when we design it, it's like I've kind of taken that passion. And I've learned from him that art and construction is all around you. Yeah. So if you just take the time to appreciate things, it's, you know, it's, it's amazing. And I think that that really kind of is what separates the kind of the... The I want to say not uh, the workers and the kind of the the craftsmen right sure. or I mean, I I don't mean that in the kind of um, I, I mean in like pejorative the, sense in the pejorative sense pejorative. but I mean you know the guys who literally you know, who are today's just, word for the day yeah, is, right. pejorative, yeah. yeah the, the little duck comes down like uh, with yeah. Groucho um, but uh, you know the guys with just hammers and tape measures sure from the artisans sure yeah I mean I, they they are, they're constantly trying to find ways to uh, to be inspired like you said and to expand but you know what we as a team we also inspire each other. So my tile guys who I've worked with for, you know, since I started this thing 11 years ago, um, they are doing things that they never thought were, you know, they were doing. That's so great. they're doing, they're tiling herringbone patterns or tiling chevron patterns 
think they're making cuts that have, they've never done before, but now they're very comfortable with it. Right. And, you know, tile, you know, like you said, tradesmen, they're proud of their work too. Sure. Nobody's you know? saying that. Yeah. So by the time they're done with it, then they put their hands on their hip and they're like, this is great. This is great work I just did. Yeah. But they were inspired by what we showed them. Right. That we were inspired by what we learned from Henry when he was in Marrakesh, for example. Does right. that make sense? Absolutely. So it's like everything trails down and we try to all like in inspire each other in a sense where we try to do things all the time. So every time I'm, you know, with my wife traveling, I always tell them, you know, I always tell my wife, it's like, look at this roof. Look at how they did this, this line. It's unbelievable. Like this, like the table that we're sitting on, this is great. Like, look at this, you know, it's unbelievable. Yeah. You it's know, just simple things like that. Work. Yeah. So. Ron, you got something? Yeah, I was going to, you know, so a different topic, but you know, very much appropriate is financing. Yes. Right. Yeah. So, you know, there are people that can pay out of pocket. Sure. They yep. can, you know, actually get a, you know, renovation type, loan. you know, loan. Yep. Um, and then, you know, I'm, I'm curious to kind of see what the breakdown is, you know, out of the people that are pay out of pocket or they just put it on a credit card or or they, they actually go down the process of, of getting a loan. Sure. Uh, so based on the clients that I've seen, and I can only speak for the clients that, you know, we deal with at Jamie's Kitchen and Bath, 90% um, of the clients pay out of pocket. You know, um, some of them pay out of the pocket. And then I understand during the construction, they do a, a HELOC, mm -hmm. a home equity line right. of credit yep. to pay for it. Right. Because most of the time after we're done working on their project, it, it does appraise for a lot more. Sure. You know, whether I'm adding another bathroom, whether I'm making a den, an official bedroom, just things like that. Yeah. You know, most people, most people have dens. They don't realize that if I just build a closet, it becomes an official bedroom. Yeah, right. You yeah. know, but people don't realize that. Yeah, yeah. You know, so all of a sudden your three bedroom is a four bedroom because I built you know, a uh, right. $800 closet in it. Exactly. You know, so things like that. Um, but do people do pay, but a lot of people, when they do pay with credit card, Ron, it's not because that they can't come up with the money. It's mostly just for airline miles and points. So if you're spending $10,000 on a credit card, that's a lot of points. That's going to pay for a hotel stay next sure. time you travel somewhere. So um, the experience I've had is most people don't come and see me unless they've actually saved up and are ready for it. Interesting. Now, and, and the follow-up question there is, have you encountered the renovation loans? And the ones I'm talking about are the FHA, I 203K, have. I have. the Fannie Mae Homestyle. I have. Because that's something that, I mean, you know, obviously I'm a lender. That's yeah. something that our company is like, yeah, you know, you should, you should really, you know, you should really promote, you know, promote those types of things. But in reality, are people using them yes. in your experience? So in my experience, we've had them before, but very few and far between. But we didn't have any problem with it. Mm -hmm. You know, we haven't had any issues with it. Um, we've had a couple people, uh, they're more on the lower end scale remodels. You know, they're not so much on the high end. Someone that lives in San Marino is not going to use an FHA type of loan to do a construction right, project, right. you know. Um, but someone in, let's say, El Monte. Right. Right. Or, South, you know, like, you know, you know, places that are having, you know, I mean, everything in California is expensive. Yeah. I mean, even a house in the Monty is half a million dollars these days. Right. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you know, between you and I, so, right. I mean, but they're, they're, they are available, but they are few and far between. Yeah. And it might, it might, you know, be more, you know, for other parts of the country too. Exactly. Yeah. Not right? so much here in Where California. the price points are a little lower yeah, and you fit 000, within the loan limits yeah. and all that, because exactly. when you start getting into a 700,000, $800,000 home and you're then, trying to find it, you've already passed the loan limits. <laughs> yeah. So you're not even eligible. Yes, I agree. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's no. hard to kind of justify that for like when you're paying $650,000 for a house. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. So yeah, that's why we don't really see it that much. And, you know, we don't really, um, people have asked me though, like, can we finance this project? Right. Mm -hmm. And they ask me that. And I say, you know, no, unfortunately we don't accept financing. We accept check, you know, cash or credit card, but they, you know, they still, you know, okay, that's fine. They'll still continue with the project. So I don't know if it's financing is, I guess, to help build the credit or I'm not too it's sure. It's more exactly. like an option maybe. For maybe. Them. They're yeah. just kind of like, hey, I'd like the option to do yeah, it if I, I want to. Yeah, I think that's or, what it is. Yeah. yeah. But no one's ever said, do you finance? Uh, no. Okay, then we'll, we can't do this project. I've right. never really heard that, but I've had the question asked to me multiple times. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Well, JR, thank you so much for being here welcome, and yep. to share your kind of inspiration and your, your artistry with us. I really appreciate you being here. You're welcome. Uh, and I'd love to uh, make sure you give everybody your contact info and, uh, and where they can find your work. Great. Yeah. You can visit uh, Jamie's Kitchen and Bath on the website. It's www.jamiescabinets.com. J-A-M-I-E-S, cabinets, C-A-B-I-N-E-T-S.com. And you could also find us on Yelp. Uh, just put Jamie's Kitchen and Bath or House Jamie's Kitchen and Bath or just Google us and 
you know, hopefully we'll hear from uh, from you soon. Awesome. Jamie, thank you. I'm sorry, JR. <laughs> JR, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, that's about it for today. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to leave them for us on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash clarified realty podcast, all one word. If you have any questions about real estate or you're looking for someone to help you buy or sell a home, remember, I'm actually a licensed real estate agent. I'd love to help you out. So please email me directly at tom at clarifiedrealty.com or give me a call at 818-335-7662. Please, come on, guys. Don't be shy. Give me a ring. For more exclusive bonus content and advice between episodes, please check out our website, www.clarifiedrealty.com. Also on our homepage, you'll find links to helpful buyer and seller guides that can give you some really great information for starting your home buying or home seller process. So definitely check those out. We're very proud of our top ranked Alexa skill. So search the Alexa store for the Clarified Realty podcast, add our skill to your daily briefing and get a dose of real estate news and tips every day of the year. Definitely give it a try. It's pretty darn cool. I'm on Snapchat, Twitter, and Instagram as well. My handle for all three of those are at Clarified Realty. Please leave feedback and reviews on iTunes or in the comments section on our page. Come on, guys. Together we are stronger. So if you have any questions or ways that we can make this podcast better, please let us know. My amazing theme song, Hey Now, is from the band Wolf. That's Wolf with two Fs. And please go check them out and like them on SoundCloud. And just a little fine print here. My brokerage is Keller Williams and Sino Sherman Oaks. I'm licensed by the California Bureau of Real Estate, and my license number is 01715353. Ron's is? Guaranteed rate, NMLS 2611, NMLS ID 558706, California and Texas. The advice we give is only for properties located in the state of California. For all those other states, please contact your local real estate agent or real estate professional. That's about it, Ron. You all good? I'm good. All right. Well, thanks for coming, everybody. Remember, the greatest thing you can ever do is make someone feel at home. Take care. We'll see you next week.